Juhu. The post of Chapo Shithouse. How's that for a good, <laughs> is that a good Geordie's impression? Think about the uh, green. Be smug. Be smugger. Be more smug. Because it's just not what I want to talk about. I'm friendly Geordie's. <laughs> That is pretty good. Hello, everyone. Tom and Emerald here, <laughs> recording a little message to you because we're taking a little week off. We've been working so hard. Yeah. We've been flat out. Um, taking a week <laughs> off the regular weekly, ep- we are unlocking our episode with uh, with Friendly Geordies, discussing Friendly Geordies. <laughs> Jordan Shanks <laughs> did a big old video about us <laughs> and we were like, nah, and we recorded uh, an episode mm. of our podcast for Patreon destroyed him. He's finished now. He's gone. Yeah. And now we're going to share it with you. <laughs> well, actually, yes. To commemorate the fact that Friendly Geordies has since put out an hour long video <laughs> absolutely demolishing and owning all of the Greens' arguments on housing, as some people <laughs> may know. Um, we are putting, we put out an hour long podcast absolutely owning and demolishing his earlier video about the Greens again. This war, <laughs> this war will not end. Yeah. I know. You know, it's funny because Michael West, who's like an independent journalist, um, yeah. who Friendly Geordie's apparently really loves and respects and had him on his podcast a lot and like thinks he's a really smart guy, does critique, has done multiple videos talking about how the half is absolute bullshit. And yet, Friendly Geordie's, I don't think, has mentioned that at all. I don't know. Of- Friendly Geordie's has a pretty big brain. I don't know. Maybe yeah. you just don't understand it. As a Green, maybe you just don't understand but the, the maybe policy. Aren't. Maybe it's just on that issue that Michael West is completely wrong and dumb and stupid, but you'd think that he would at least Must acknowledge be. the fact that this guy that he's points to in respect can also show a critique of this housing fund and it's actually sort of fine. But, um, yeah. yeah, well, well what, what can you do? Should we watch the video and find out? Let's do it. Change from within. This podcast is recorded on stolen and unceded Aboriginal land. We acknowledge the First Nations and elders of this country and we join their calls for justice. Serious danger. Hey patrons, Tom and Emerald here, your mates. Hello. Thanks for supporting Serious Danger, a podcast about green politics in Australia. Thanks for listening to Chapo Shithouse. We we appreciate it very much. You know, I've never listened to Chapo Trap House. That's what it's called. You'd love it. You'd love it. Mm, Yeah. I feel like it's hard to come in late, though. I feel like it's. It's is, yes, and you probably miss the glory out. days. Yeah, these days they mainly talk about they just laugh at Trump and talk about movies and stuff. But I still find it very interesting. But the golden era was sort of yeah during the insanity of twenty twenty. I think yeah. Mm. Anyway, uh, this is not an official Greens Party podcast, despite what you might have heard on YouTube. It is made possible with the help of the Green Institute <laughs> and Michael Griffin. Thanks so much for supporting our show. Here is some bonus content. We are going deep. And Emerald is going to do a live blind react mm-hmm. to the video that truth-seeking YouTuber Friendly Geordies, <laughs> Jordan Shanks, released about us last week. Huge. Mm-hmm. I haven't watched it. I was like, should I watch it first? But I decided I will live react blind on air. <laughs> and then we should probably put this on YouTube, really. Isn't that what YouTube is? People just watching other things. And it's reacting. a reaction. Be- that's exactly right. And then we'll have like uh, the thumbnail will be, me being like, <gasps> like, <laughs> <laughs> and then Not he'll do a react page. to our react video. And oh, fuck, it's gonna yeah. be so good. Mm-hmm. Um, quick mailbag segment. Thank you to all our patrons. You can always get in touch. You can email us hello at seriousdangerpod.com or message us on Patreon. Spirit of Anger and Hope has asked, I'm not sure how often you do Q&As, but next time, a couple of questions for Tom. Do you have any particular episodes of Like of a Six-Year-Old you'd like to suggest to people? I can think of one. <laughs> yes. Well, I did talk to my good friend Emerald Moon. I actually don't. Like I feel like that was a bad interview from me, so don't listen to that one. You were great. You were fantastic. Uh, definitely check out that one. I love talking to Lyle Shelton for the Australian Christian Lobby, even though it was fucking uh, painful, but I thought that was kind of an interesting conversation, mm-hmm. as was the one with Sam Newman. And actually, one that kind of flew on the radar was with um, James Button about his long piece on cancel culture and wokeness that I thought I did a decent job of trying to lay out why I thought his concerns were a bit silly. Okay. Um, I've frozen that podcast or ended that podcast, really. All the episodes are still up there and you can listen back to them if you so wish. Um, But I'm just, I'm full-time, full-time SD these days. As you should be. Also, you and Emerald have been somewhat scathing of Van Bottom's podcast several times, but you'd also interviewed her on Like I'm a Six-Year-Old several mm. times and seemed to get on with her quite well. Is this mm. a case of reasonable people disagreeing or do you think her worldview is unreasonable? Well, Tom? 
<laughs> um, I think Van's look. Van, full disclaimer: Van ha- is I would still consider my friend. friend She's blocked me on Twitter now officially. Um, I think <laughs> and you still think you're Van- friends? Well, oh, well, most people are blocked by Van Batam on Twitter. I don't think that's the end of a friendship. Tom, I'm I sorry to tell you, I don't think you're friends with Van anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I hate to be the one to break it to you. Yeah, I don't think that's true. Okay. Um, I haven't heard from her in a while. Mm. Should I call her live on it? <laughs> um, there's plenty of things Van and I agree on, but I think her analysis and critique of the Greens is ridiculous, constantly undermined mm. by itself, by its inconsistency, and I, it is very hard to take any political analysis she takes seriously when there's such this you know, gaping hole um, and blind rage towards the Greens party and a complete misrepresentation of what the party is about and what they're doing and her extraordinary faith in the Australian Labor Party to fix things as it's currently constituted. That's what I'd say. Emerald? Yeah, we're not friends. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of people we're not friends with who love the Labor Party, (laughs) um, we did talk about brief, I think we did a QA and a and people asked us, what do you think of Friendly Geordies? And we had a brief discussion. Um, We can't remember too much of the details, but generally what what are your vibes on, on this little fella here, Emerald? I think he's even worse than people realize. Like I, I feel like the um, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Like the manosphere kind of content is what really gives me the right. ick about friendly Geordies. The stuff about you know how to get women to like you that's based on these weird patriarchal like kind of sexist binary ideas of gender. Mm-hmm. These weird videos like that. Obviously, yeah, he has history of like some pretty racist videos as I understand it or being involved in other people's videos where they're having racist convos about Aboriginal people. Um, And he's clearly just a, like a paid hack. Like I think we know that. So, you know, I wish he would just, I I remember I liked the videos about, you know, Aussies going to Bali and (laughs) Aussies be like, (laughs) you know, this one's like about 20 years ago, however long ago. Aussies be like this. Married mm. at first sight is weird. Uh, I mean, I must. I was quite. I was quite surprised. He is over a million subscribers now on YouTube, right? Dick. Which is which is pretty extraordinary. And the channel does have a mix of yes, political analysis videos, and then also these sort of pop culture ones. Then he has, if people don't know, have he has his own channel, which is much more direct address videos, in which it's sort of much more in the self help vibe. He is a big fan of Jordan Peterson and does have that kind of very weird wrinkle. Yeah, uh, that stuff really here. I have a low tolerance for for that kind of stuff. Um it's pretty I, bizarre. There is a weird kind of yeah trad moralizing about a whole bunch of activities too, which we'll get to in this video in which he shares his mm, thoughts about I, certain people's drug yes. habits. <laughs> and I guess like we'll get into it, but I think that the thing with Friendly Geordies is that I would place like cut a very clear distinction between Friendly Geordies, Jordan Shanks, and his fan base because he has a very broad fan base and I think a lot of them are not actually shit and don't share like all of his views and would be very right for the picking for Greens people and like for the, for the Greens. And I, I, you know, have had people come into Greens offices and be like, I've, I saw this thing on a friendly Geordie's video yeah. and well, you know, immediately that feels like a red flag, but then they're like, anyway, love the Greens. Can I have some stickers? Yeah. And so there's that real, like a lot of the time it's very young people. It's people who, whose politics are very underdeveloped or very kind of nascent um, and he's obviously able to reach them in a way that a lot of people, a lot of people can't, and mm. that's impressive. And so, yeah, I think that it's it's worthwhile being like, well, why can he reach them, and how do we reach these people with stuff yeah. that's not fucking bullshit? I think increasingly we are, which is probably why more and more um, Labor is scared, and he's scared. <laughs> oh, he's not scared of us. We're just a stupid podcast. We don't have we don't have enough subscribers. We have a We're nothing. Subscri- We're has, so stupid. He's going to do a fifteen a minute episode times about us. Yeah. as many subscribers as us. Is that the right yes. maths? Yeah. Extraordinary. <laughs> But, I mean, I think you're right. He totally taps into the millennial Zoomer rage that yeah. you and I sort of uh, tap into. I've done a bunch of comedy about it, the book's about that as well. You know, mm-hmm. this this anger and frustration with the political status quo. Yeah. His analysis stops at <laughs> <laughs> Labor is also responsible for that shitty status quo. Yeah. And uh, he, 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 he may occasionally be gracious enough to admit that 
you know, the Greens policies would be good if it could happen. And mm. yes, the Labor Party isn't perfect, but the Liberal Party is so fucked up and terrible and horrific and bad and have been so bad in government and here's how bad they are, which he's totally right on. I, I, he could produce a video which is totally accurate about how shitty the coalition uh, is as a political force and their political project. But, you know, if you want the problems to be addressed through a better policy prescription, what the Labor Party comes up with can't help you. And shut up, actually, because you're actually you're actually <laughs> doing the Liberals' work by saying that what the Labor Party is doing is not good enough. But he wouldn't swear at us, Tom, and that's the difference. He wouldn't use rude words, yes. Mm-hmm. Very strange civility mm-hmm. angle, which we'll get to in the video. Just briefly from our patrons, I thought this was interesting. This is from Daniel, a former friendly Jordan's, Geordie's patron. It's happening. Uh, I guess has, moved, has, has come over to the dark side, the a green s- side. swing patron. <laughs> When he's getting the preferential voting on Patreon, but number one to Greens. <laughs> when he's good, he's really good, but there's no limits to how bad an argument he's willing to make against his enemies are. His enemies include the Greens, the Australian Unemployed Workers Union, and mm. if you won't remember, I think it was in 2020 in which he unleashed a, an extraordinary, brutal yeah. attack on unemployed poverty, anti-poverty it's, activists. It's funny. Friendly Geordies has also made videos about both two of my ex-boyfriends, um, <laughs> which is... <laughs> Interesting. I don't know what that means, but I'd like him to make one about my most recent ex. Um, yes. If okay. he wouldn't well, maybe- <laughs> That would make me feel yes. better. See, this is common ground. This is negotiating yes. in good faith. Yes, there's a lot there. <laughs> Jordan, get and in anyone touch. Who criticizes- <laughs> anyone who criticizes him on the ALP. He's also terrible at admitting he ever got anything wrong. You can also see from his second channel he's quite heavily influenced by the self-help side of the manosphere and a lot of his humor is punching down. I see the makings of a spiral. He's the millennial Mark Latham. Oh, I've heard yeah. that used a, okay. a term. Dion says, before I joined the Greens, I really enjoyed Friendly Geordie's content, but I got super put off in the lead up to the last federal election where he started pulling out the worst Labor talking points. He did mm. a video on preferential voting that boiled down to only vote Labor one or you're voting for the Liberals. I never felt so betrayed, but what I thought up to that point was an honest political commentator. Mm. It And it begs the question, like, that's right, you, you wonder whether... He, you know, Friendly Geordies believes this stuff, like whether he is a Labor true believer or whether he has, you know, potentially financial deals with Labor um, or whatever kind of arrangements with Labor that he is compelled to make those videos um, kind of running Labor talking points at at points where it's, you know, at at crucial points in an election cycle or in a negotiations on a bill, for example, like the Mm. housing bill. Like, or, you know, yeah, did he just because he got such um, favourable response from Labor through doing his videos, has that loyal to the, loyalty to them through that? Like, I, I really don't know. I don't know. Well, you can also just believe it. Like, he can be Labor right and it's fine. The the financial mm-hmm. dealing stuff, again, I'd have to go over the details. I, I believed at one point BuzzFeed, who he also despised, uh, mm-hmm. ran a story about finding emails from Fredley Geordie's media group approaching people and saying, hey, we can make a video for you. These are the rates we can pay for this. And I believe he did do paid content for the the ACTU, for example. Yes, unions and uh, and also something around super, I think. Now, again, to the point in which there's no disagreement between Fredly Geordie's on a whole bunch of uh, a uh, whole bunch of fronts, that is he can produce a video about how terrible the Liberal Party is and I can agree with him 100% and he can present it in an engaging way. He can politically engage young people. I think that's great. If he encourages people to think about union politics and join their union or, you know, change their super to a super that isn't necessarily funding and, you know, destroying the planet, these are all nice, good things. Um, but that, that, that sort of lack of honesty in political commentary that Dion's talking about mm. I think really comes through in the video we're about to watch and I think is still just the biggest gap and the biggest problem with, with Friendly Geordie's work. Okay. All right, baby. Should we do it? <laughs> now there's Matt Healy stuff. It's, it's called, the video is called Housing and its description is my thoughts on Matty Healy. So I think you'll also have a lot to say on that front, I guess, as well. Okay, let's go. All right. Okay, okay, I'm going to finally address it. It's been a long time coming, but I can't stay silent on it anymore. Too many of you have been asking for my opinion. Is the 1975's Matty Healy a dirtbag dreamboat or just another problematic white dude who needs to shut up and amplify marginalised voices? Well, 
I think the problem with that question is it's just so binary when, in fact, two things can be true at the same time. <laughs> Maddie Healy can have his heart in the right place, but like any white dude bro can also do things that are really insensitive and rip through the hearts of our most marginalised communities. But as you know, I'm not interested in performing of activism. Cancelling okay. people doesn't create change. Change comes from constructive is he being conversations. Sincere or is he doing jokes? I don't watch. To be done. This, it's all, yeah, hang on. It all okay, sorry. Up to I, it all will be revealed. Okay, keep going. <laughs> is Maddie needs to be sat down by someone from these marginalised communities and they need to say, listen, Maddie, we know your heart is in the right place and you don't mean to hurt so many people, but as a member of a community you've hurt so deeply through your actions over the years. As a person with ears, i got to say your son stink. Anyway, since I'm already having a go at anemic twinks, why Wait. are the greens blocking? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it. That was it. That was about a minute of content of your life. So he's sort of doing the piss take uh, of the so PC the, woke I, progressive thing. Yeah, and then it ends up like, oh, his music. And then bad. he's like, the 1975 are bad. Mm. Is that, do you think that Friendly Geordie's audience thinks the 1975 are bad? I, I have no idea. Also, like I, I, I know he likes Aussie hip hop. Mm. That's about I don't know. The yeah, I guess. Not. Okay. Maybe we'll get. Maybe this is going to be the recurring theme. I think I get this feeling when people do a style of comedy that I just thought no one did anymore. And I'm like, oh, we're doing the, <laughs> this, this kind of music that I don't like because it's popular. And I've got ears and you need to apologise to me. And it's like, oh, that's so well, funny. Yeah, it's, it's the old switcheroo. It's the old sort of, you know, you think you're going one way, then it goes the other way. Oh, actually, he should be cancelled for his bad music. Maddie Healy's uh, anyway. sickening. He's gross. He's yucky. So- and so not, what? Not because yes. of, not because and not he's just because like he broke up with Taylor, but actual problematic, terrible stuff. Oh, that he's I was done. saying the other. I was going the opposite way. I was like, not because of the actual problematic, problematic stuff. Oh, okay. Just because he gives me it, <laughs> and I think he's not good enough for Taylor. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I thought, and didn't they break? I this thought is they a good up, reaction, but I guess <laughs> I haven't been following it closely enough because what they're back together, which doesn't make any fucking sense. Oh God, he does. So in later in this video is a clip from Maddie Healy about. Um, a song he wrote about sex and stuff, which does seem awful. I don't, I just, I'm so 1975 for whatever bit. reason just completely passed right. me by. I just have no investment or awareness yeah. either way about this stuff. But I'm not too know. invested in the band, but I'm invested in Taylor. Anyway. Anyway, since he's already having a go at a naming twinks, let's talk about the naming greens. twinks. Fucking $18 billion fund for public housing. So he just That's talks like that the whole time. Is that how he talks? <laughs> Okay, we've got we've Sorry. got about 14 we've got 14 minutes to go. So yes, you will be hearing that voice quite a bit. I'm regretting this. Can we do a different episode? Sorry, just got out of the shower. Lismore, I'm coming to your town no, tomorrow. Don't come and to Sydney, Lismore. I'm coming a few days afterwards. Get your tickets. Links in the description. Don't you think Maddie Healy looks like a Greens MP? And you yeah. can't get angry at me for addressing this. We did a poll on Sorry? my He does? Yeah, he kind of does. Okay, yes. Look, there are a few moments in here that I think Friendly Tony makes a decent. Anyway, we'll, we'll get to He's it. He's a comedian. Patreon yeah. on what my patrons wanted me to make a video on, and the top result was the Greens wedged Labour. If you that's want me to make a video on why. Interesting, yes. Adam Band, who's the true king of the manosphere. Join my Patreon and vote for it. Look, I'm that cheap. If enough of you vote for it, an entire video could be years. You said in the speech that uh, wages growth wasn't going uh, particularly well. What's the current WPI? Google it, mate. It's Adam pouring the champagne. It's his hot wife. We've got a montage yes. here that's like King Adam. We've got a little montage yeah. going on. Yes. So I think I assume that he likes, I mean, the Google it mate moment would have been that's Adam a very Bant, friendly Geordie's. Bad Greens enemy, you know. but shitting on the media. Who he, I think probably hates the media more than he hates the Greens. Mm, true, probably true, say. True, true, true. So he's probably into that. And uh, yep. well, yes, he... it's got this weird Look, filter over the I'm video. Saying, yeah, okay. Yeah, Keep going. is the future of the Greens depends on you joining my Patreon. I'll fix their entire messaging. No longer will they be the soy boy party with that classic pastel millennial graphic designer sheet. They will be the badass manosphere predator philosopher party. Mac. I Chad mean, you really, Lather. sorry, yeah. okay, stop. A Labor supporter wants to have a go at the Greens design and branding. <laughs> like, come to me when you fucking move past Canva Premium. Our designers are the best. Yeah, surely, yes, Labor is using Canva as well. I mean, I know the Greens use a lot of Canva as well, in like at least at the branch level or in like a lot of campaigning yeah, yeah. sort of work. Canva's fine, but like yeah, the literal 
the premier does these weird Canva squares that have like all these different fonts and like it is so awful. Um, <laughs> our our design assets, if nothing else, the Greens design assets are beautiful. Also, yeah, it's just like oh, the Greens should be should toughen up, be more like you know intense and badass and like hardcore, and is mm. now about to do a twelve minute video about how the Greens holding the alliance for our own principles and fighting for our Wait, is, he's is saying. Bad. I'm seeing in the captions that Max is in the manosphere. So friendly Geordie no, is saying who's, he's what? saying that Max, if if you do this video, friendly Geordies will give advice that will transform the Greens into an awesome, awesome oh. mad, mad manosphere party. They won't be cucks anymore. Max will stop dressing like me, uh, a ten year old autistic boy going to an aquarium. I think is how he describes it. So it's a little bit of self deprecation in there, and they'll be good. And and Max will have a cool car. It's a bit. A housing spokesperson will no longer dress like me, an autistic 10-year-old on an excursion to the aquarium. We will use the Patreon money to buy him a robe and one of those watches that looks like a Hot Wheels It's a Photoshop thing of Max. he can actually maintain. Sorry, what? I was just describing for people listening that was a Photoshop thing of Max wearing a big robe with like a Ferrari in the background. Great. And the UFO. But alas, for now, we're stuck with the hosts of Chapo Shithouse. That's po- us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> now, as you might have noticed, when we called our weekly episode Chapo Shithouse, I think Chapo Shithouse is really good. I think it's like a, it's, it's a very succinct slam <laughs> on us. I mean, it's kind of cool to put us in the same sort of category as Chapo yeah. Trap House. I assume Friendly Geordies hates Chapo Trap House because they are, you know, are critical because they would say they're socialist and they're critical of Joe Biden, I suppose, but who the oh, fuck knows? Yeah, okay, yeah. Anyway. This podcast basically running the Greens messaging. Before we really get into why the Greens are blocking the housing fund, just watch a clip from Tom Ballard's unofficial Who's? Greens podcast. This is what wow. pissed me off. Yes. You know. As a woman now. trying to make it in the male-dominated <laughs> podcasting sphere, to have my existence erased by this man on this stage, <laughs> I I find it so insulting. Um, I, I mean, don't care what well, else he says. Yes. You're, yes, it's definitely our podcast. You weren't at the live gig, to be fair, but he absolutely could have mentioned that. You do come up later in the uh, video, you'll be pleased to know. Oh, really? I thought I wasn't mentioned at all and I was sad about it. What are your tweets will make a KO appearance? Oh, good. But also, like him questioning that it's not an official Greens Party podcast. It's like we've made it. We, we could not have been more clear <laughs> every single We're episode. Very clear. We're extremely clear <laughs> that this is not an official Greens Party podcast. And he also says serious danger, as if we just came up with that phrase out of nowhere. Clearly, not worrying to acknowledge that it's a quote from Scott Morrison. Yeah, wouldn't he like? Does what? Does he like Scott Morrison? Does he? Interesting. Oh, <laughs> got that, Jordan. <laughs> Serious danger with Greens housing spokesperson Max Chandler Mather. This is so you get an understanding of the level of genuine revolutionary fervor Labor up against. Okay, so just get ready. He says this that is sarcastically, this is, and yet, like, it is genuine revolutionary fervor. It is. And he is, again, trying to do this thing which you hear a lot from the Labor Party. The Greens are stupid and pathetic, and the Labor have to deal with this. And also, uh, Greens are extraordinarily powerful who are holding all of Australian mm. politics pro- and progress to hostage. So stupid little dumb, annoying socialists that you shouldn't care about or whatever, like ridiculous living their own fantasy land, but also single-handedly controlling the entire Australian political debate and exercising political power over where this country is going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very strange. Hey, Bob. Anyway, but what he's about to go into here is a recurring theme that he pulls out a lot and is v- a very strange angle, I would say. Anyway, here we go. Okay. Because Albanese's been there since 1996, right? Like, so if you've been there for most of his life, he doesn't have the same perspective as sort of the fresh eyes that you come into this place thinking about how cooked this is. I assume that he thinks, oh, the system works pretty well. We just got to do it in the right sort of labor way, you know? Yeah, that's right. I'm not sure what he thinks, to be honest, but um, I, that seems like a kind reading. I, I don't think they think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you're right. He's a dumb cum. Uh, <laughs> No, Sorry to on. steal your material, Jess. Uh, you can have that. No problem. <laughs> okay, first. How long has your podcast been going? Over a year and a half and you still haven't hit a thousand subs. I okay, we have hit that. a thousand subs, yeah, actually. Yeah, well, actually, so... thank you very much, Jordan. <laughs> so, We're actually doing really well. Your... Yeah. 
Well, like I'm sure we could track out some sort of exponential basis on which we'll grow, <laughs> just like he did. We too will have one million subscribers, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think yes. By the time we've been going as long as Friendly Johnny's, we'll have like six million subscribers. Yeah, so, friends will you. be in government, so <laughs> we will the be the official government podcast. Govern. The idea that a coked up ex radio host knows more about oh. power and public policy oh. than a VB'd up career politician, it oh really should show you the list. <laughs> extraordinary stuff. <laughs> he wait, okay. What did he say? What's he called? Um, Albanese a something politician? A V'd up. And public policy than a VB dub career politician. It really should VB show you. Dub. I don't know what that means. No idea. Um, but yeah, he contrasts like Tom. So coked up ex radio host. Mm hmm. Where do you now, think he's getting? You are an ex radio host. I'm interested <laughs> in these coked up allegations. Well, I wasn't coked up in the clip scene. You I was compl- okay. I was no, I think I'd had one beer that day. One beer. Um, hmm. I have consumed cocaine in my life. You this look is true. like so. I guess you look like someone who does who could do cocaine. <laughs> what you does earn that a mean? reasonable amount of money. <laughs> You're like I'm a looking, tall white guy. I'm near showbiz sometimes. He um, looks look. like someone who would do cocaine, though. <laughs> to be fair, also. I don't <laughs> does he mention uh, that I'm straight edge? No, <laughs> which I'm like, hello. Doesn't yeah, that give the show some credit? Tom is it constantly each other. coked up. He's a <laughs> former, he's a success, like has a long and successful career. I'm just a girl who doesn't do drugs. That's fine. And so it. <laughs> I wonder what, yes, I don't know. We must have been at some kind of party together at some point. We do cross paths somewhere. Somehow. Oh, really? Anyway, it's not like a closed secret that I've done cocaine every now and again. But Friendly Geordie's. <laughs> A uh, huge, uh, extraordinary uh, vehemence. His condemnation of anybody who has does do any recreational drugs is very. Oh, um, is that a thing? Is very well. Known. He despises it. He he thinks. Any I mean, drugs? I think any drugs whatsoever. Alcohol? Yes. If you're a drug, uh, no, he probably drinks. Yes, illicit cool. drugs. I mean, on cocaine, he makes the moral argument that if you're buying cocaine, you're supporting this horrific drug trade. Um, but also there's also the self help, like you know, don't ah. be a stoner. You're a loser if you participate oh, in recreational God. drugs. Which of course would mean you have no analysis of the drug war, or would be sympathetic to any of the policies that would take a harm reduction uh, yeah, approach okay. towards uh, illicit Cool. Drugs. This guy sucks. Let's keep going. He also hates Triple J so much, like disproportionately so. And so, oh, really? me, a green supporting, drug doing, mm. ex Triple J presenter. This is uh, I'm kind not of surprising. Be. This is the first video, isn't it? How <laughs> you? Are you the level of undergrad hubris infesting the current crop of greens? To explain why Albanese's actions in office aren't line by line greens policy by saying, oh, he's a dumb c- really undermines the credibility of anything else said on this podcast. What are you talking about? You're either just extremely what? dishonest or you're just a dumb c-. I mean, I have a lot to say about John Howard, but he wasn't a dumb c- who just couldn't comprehend the complexity and ingenuity of Labor's vision. It was the same with Malcolm Turbull, Dom Perrottet, John Bar- Well, no, nah, actually, he is a dumb c-. Oh, I see. He's a dumb cunt. Okay, so okay, I did a joke. He's okay, he's doing did- the exact joke that you did. Uh, yes, he's, he's saying he's a dumb cunt. He just did the exact joke where he's like, Talking about the actual issues, like, and he's like, well, yes. you can't just say they're dumb. There's like, dumb you don't agree are... with them on policy, blah, blah, blah. Yes. But the joke would be for me to simply say, actually, they're a dumb cunt. And you made yes. that joke. And he's like, why yes. did Tom make this joke? And then he makes the joke. <laughs> he stole your he just joke. Does the same joke. <laughs> oh my God. And it's so bootlicky. Just a bit like a career, pol- like mm. he's saying a career politician is a good thing, ignoring the complete analysis. Oh, that, is that you know, what he's saying? He's saying it is a good thing. He's no saying one like he's has a ever smart used guy. career politician <laughs> as a compliment. That is as insane. <laughs> Friendly Joyce just did. Uh, the, the fact that he like yeah extracts from this so much as if as if this one joke is you know representative of my entire critique of Anthony Albanese or or the Greens the the Greens critique of Anthony Albanese is that he's too dumb to understand shit. That's why he does all this bad stuff, right? Like that's the summation of our entire critique. Is so. Ridiculous and bad faith. What is great to know is that Friendly Geordie's presumably watched the entire live show, like would have mm. gone through this entire video would and would have seen it. a room full of people laughing, mm. having a good time, Max being fucking amazing as he spells out exactly how cooked the uh, Housing Australia Future Fund is, us having a fun time in the heart of Greensland in Brisbane, um, celebrating, expressing solidarity. I and, keep talking about how nice you know, it was. 
I wasn't it, there. I know. It was a, 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 everyone be, being sad that you weren't there, obviously. But anyway, it was a great show and a fun time and the fact that we have to watch all of it and that's the best bit that he got out of it is quite interesting. Anyway. <laughs> At the same time, you have Max Chandler Mather whinging about civility and personal attacks like he's fucking Nancy Pelosi, but sit there whilst his Drago friends in shelter. Oh, hello. <laughs> it's me, Drago friends. Oh. Prime Minister. And I think in their, like, comms adult brains, his whinging is especially dumb with the personal attack that was oh, so bad was this. The green spokesperson on housing... The green spokesperson on housing, let me talk to you about the green spokesperson on housing. Please do. You know, he's had a taste of the media spotlights. He's had a taste of the media spotlight. Your spokesperson on housing is now prioritising media attention from stunts and obstruction over housing for for women and kids fleeing domestic violence. How shameful. I'm fine with Max Chandler May for making stupid attacks on far more impressive people than himself. I have an entire podcast where I do exactly that week after week, but I don't simultaneously play the victim and whinge about personal attacks existing while making personal attacks. Okay, so many problems here. uh, Yeah, you go. (laughs) Well, okay, a few things. First of all, Max did not make the personal attack, okay? I didn't make the personal attack. I made a fucking joke at a comedy show <laughs> that yeah. clearly did represent my actual opinion. I suppose Max didn't distance himself from he the comments, no comments or whatever, the, whatever the, or condemn me yeah. or whatever. So that's bizarre. Uh, secondly, Penny Wong withdrew those comments in the parliament as well, so I guess she thought that those comments were bad in the end that she made uh, after Nick McKim um, responded to them. But I don't know cares? if I would... Uh... On the record, say that I believe that withdrawing your comments in Parliament means literally anything. That's right. We have discussed. You could call people a cut and they just say withdraw. It's a great yeah. system. It's really- I, I withdraw my dumb cut comment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there you go. The <laughs> you like that? Um, also, this idea. So, so I think Fairly Geordies is going for the hypocrisy that is Max talking about personal attacks throughout the housing debate, while also. Again, making he hasn't made personal attacks. He was on stage while a dumb comedian, myself, <laughs> made the comment about Anthony Albanese. So he hasn't made the personal attack. Now, uh, of course, people lots have said, well, you know, Fiddly Geordie's loves nothing more than making personal attacks left, right, and centre. But he's sort of saying you can't do both. You can't make personal attacks mm-hmm. on other people and then play the civility card. Now, when Max talks and Max doesn't whinge about personal attacks, mm-hmm. he's done like maybe so one tweet. Say. Or in interviews, will say they are making personal attacks. That is a critique. He's pointing mm. out what they're doing to try yeah. to distract you from the shitty policy agenda of the Housing Australia Future Fund. He doesn't. He's not. I, I don't. I mean, and all people like. I know that I don't think Max is someone who is a civility discourse like a civility yes. politics person, because and he isn't just saying it is bad that they are making personal attacks. Every time they do that, he's just saying remember that while they're making mm. these attacks, they are not talking about the substance of the debate here, which is X. Like, yes. he's just responding by saying that. And, like, I've seen people, yeah, like, people get really t- fucking caught up in civility politics like Friendly Geordies is doing here. And mm. a lot of people are like, it's don't go after Max and they're being so mean to him and blah, blah, blah. And, like, sure, they are. But it's, yeah, that's not an angle that Max is advancing that I've seen. Nope. That would be like Maddie Healy taking a stand against saying shit that makes your skin crawl. It would ring hollow. Which, speaking of, I just have to show you this Maddie Healy quote. It's too fucking good. Sex is just a le- love letter to kind of every prudish 17 year old girl. You know, everyone's been there with that kind of indecisive, flirty girl who just can't make her mind up. Anyway, I actually should get into this. I mean, that is, that is fucking gross. It's also just. They were showing a clip of him playing guitar and he's, yeah, something really, it's true to him. Matty Healy makes my skin crawl. Yep, no good. All right, we can all agree on that. Some details yeah. on the housing south rather than just 10 minutes of aesthetic critiques of the Greens of the 1975, but it's just so much more fun. Another thing. No, I'm going to do it one more. Come on. What is wrong with Matty Healy's accent? Sacré <laughs> bleu. Okay, sorry, look, anyway, uh, what <laughs> labour is a tech- You like that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. All right, good. See, we're getting bad partisans. I was partisans also about to just get, like, 
um, Jordan Shanks. He has such great teeth. Do you think that they're his real teeth? Ooh, they are good teeth. Not yeah. very working class of you. Really so true. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was more fun. A $10 billion fund called the Housing Australia Future Fund. The fund is a bit like a sovereign wealth fund. $10 billion is invested, and the returns of the fund are spent on building social and affordable housing. It's set to build 30,000 homes over the next five years. It's set to do that. It's set. Set to. What does that it's mean? set to. What does set to it's mean? Set, it's set also, to. Also, have you seen the whiteboard video, Jordan? Because what? yes, well, does no. it actually, really? are the returns spent simply on building social and affordable housing? Not so much. Yeah, no, not so much. Five years. When Labor ended office with Kevin Rudd, there was around 378,000 social housing dwellings. And then when Labor left office, that number had increased to over 408,000. Then from the coalition entering office from 2013 to 2020, do you know what that number increased to? 420? Yeah! No, it was 416,190 or some shit. That means... That for their first seven years in office, the coalition were building less than 1,100 new dwellings a year. Labor's new fund could build up to 6,000 new dwellings a year. That is a massive increase. The fund is pretty clever because it's designed to ingrain an ongoing source of funding for social housing that sustains itself even when the Liberals are in office as it's operating independently of the budget, meaning that if the fund passes, it's designed to become a sustained source of housing funding that the Liberals will have little or no incentive to destroy. Look at this graph. Hmm. Look at this. Now this- Look at this graph. <laughs> 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 My graph says Labor good. Um, this That argument is one that seems to have found some purchase, I think, from some people mm. who are coming to a good faith, and you, you hear this a lot from, which, are, you know, I guess is a reasonable concern from folks who are particularly sympathetic to the Labor's agenda to sort of say you need to do things in government that prevent future governments, conservative governments, from fucking them up. Um, what what would you think about that, uh, that line, Emerald? Well, but, like, if the fund doesn't do a good thing, it kind of doesn't matter. Surely that's the fundamental response, right? Is it's like you're saying that it's good because it enshrines a good thing um, in perpetuity that can't be torn down. But if it's not a good thing, that's what's your argument. Right. Also, I think it's very arguable that the Liberal Party wouldn't get rid of stuff. Liberal Party, the Tony Abbott government absolutely got rid of a whole bunch of climate shit when they got in. Um adjusting, reducing the ambition of your current policy agenda while you are in government, while you Mm. are enjoying some of the highest uh, popularity ratings of any government ever, while your main opposition that you're telling us about, the the Liberal and National Coalition, are in absolutely no man's land and and at least, you know, a two-election cycle, I reckon, away from getting even close to returning to government. Don't clip that up and use it against me in the future if I'm wildly wrong. But, uh, yeah, the fact that you would uh, diminish your ambition or deliver this shitty policy agenda now uh, because of what might happen in the future from a conservative government seems it seems to be an argument that is very well suited to just justifying whatever the Labor Party serve up and sort of saying whatever we've come up with now is perfectly adjusted to combat any future conservative tax mm. down the road. You know, again, yeah. entire policy and political agenda and our ability to try and solve the problems of the status quo now are completely defined by our political enemies down the track. And, and that and is used as a bludgeon from the centre and the centre-right to tell the left that you can, we can't have anything good. And more to the point, like whenever Labor is like, oh, well, we're doing this to avoid attacks from our opponents. And so right. it's like, oh, because you're saying that the Liberals wouldn't get rid of this because the Liberals support it. Isn't that right. your red flag? Like yes. if you're saying that, yeah, you're you're delivering something that would theoretically have enough support so as not to be opposed by your opponents, then mm. what is the point of you? What even is the point? That is exactly why the fund is needed. And this is also exactly why it's insanely dishonest for the Greens to even mildly equate Labor with the Liberals. Now. Again, uh, the Friendly Joy does despise this whenever the attack comes up, when anyone suggests that Liberal and Labor are the mm. same, which I think we've talked before about, excuse me, the fact that we don't literally think that they're the same across the board. Mm. There are a whole bunch of um, uh, policy positions which Labor are clearly way better than the Liberals and the Nationals. 
the critique Labor make, uh, the, the Greens make on a regular basis is that on some big questions like tax cuts for the rich, like torturing refugees, <laughs> uh, like uh, taking on the fossil fuel lobby, they are the same on these major issues and we don't actually have a choice between those two parties. Pointing mm. that out is not saying that those two parties are completely the same yeah. on every issue but trying to point out the similarities in the neoliberal consensus they subscribe to. Yeah. So, so, I, I, But I think it's weird because... I don't think we're even running that line. No, I <laughs> haven't actually front, heard that we? line at all. That's... We're not talking about this at all. So it was yeah, very strange. anyway. The problem with affordable housing in this country is it's pretty much only built when Labor's in office. Incorrect. Mm, Big yeah. old <laughs> wrong one there, buddy. <laughs> Under the Menzies government, one in, five gov- one in five houses were built by the government, okay? One in five houses uh under the Keynesian economics, under the Liberal Party, yes, but a completely different political status quo when the government had a much more interventionist approach, one in five houses built by the government. Uh, as the Australian Institute regularly mentions, the Defence Housing Corporation is a body set up by the government to build houses for people in the army. That's happened under both governments. It's You can totally do it. You can build houses directly. You can house people. You can totally do it. And the housing crisis is hugely fueled by the neoliberal shifts of economic rationalism under friendly Geordie's heroes, Paul Keating, (laughs) which deregulated the financial market and absolutely started cooking things and began the commodification and insane housing crisis that we now live with today. Ding, ding, ding. Boo. So Labor's fixing that. Finally, (laughs) this is the Greens' main gripe with the fund, that it's a fund that it takes advantage of the reality that Australia is a Western country with a market economy. Oh, I'm sorry. If only the Greens won more seats last election, we could have nationalised everything by now, ended neoliberalism, whatever the fuck that means. Now, (laughs) this is wild. Nodding furiously. (laughs) This is... (laughs) Yeah, first of all, don't threaten us with a good time. And secondly, and this is, again, really... Because, again... On some fronts, I think Jordan is a, a smart dude. He reads a lot, yada, yada, yada. He knows what his approach means. He, he does know what it means. Clearly, it's a, you know, because it's a term used by, well, first of all, yeah, it's used by the Greens a lot, okay, to critique Labour Party. Also, Jim Chalmers just wrote an essay in the monthly talking yes. about how neoliberalism is bad. His hero, Kevin Rudd, is constantly talking about how neoliberalism is bad. So it is a, a thing that you could investigate and explain to your audience, <laughs> engage on, and discuss. He also has, in numerous videos, dismiss the idea that left wing and right wing means anything. Like he thinks it's all just a media media construction of, of who's left wing and who's right wing. But I thought kind of liberal labor not the same. Okay. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Anyway. Ended market economy, ended racism, ended toxic masculinity, and every problem in Australia would be fixed. See, and this is so fucking cynical. This is so bleak. Yeah. And we we see this so often. This is an absolute straw man argument that when the Greens are pushing for the most <laughs> basic social democracy shit in the world, directly fund public housing, right, like just spend money on the stuff that we think is good, the same way we fund housing and education, spend money from the government, from tax revenues and the revenue the government Mm. makes on building something in society, cut to, oh, God, yeah, you want you want um, The Greens want Coke and the Bubblers. Unicorns, Coke and the Bubblers, Pixie Dust. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. This is a very normal thing we're fucking asking for. (laughs) It's so mild. (laughs) How's he, please? (laughs) This is better things aren't possible to certify it in 15 minutes. Anyway. Yeah, it's a really realistic platform because we're not promising to end ironic racism, the kind that, like, Maddie Healy engages in. That's a really complicated problem that we just can't look to end in one term. No idea what he's going on I there for. The no. Greens are kicking up a stink that Labor aren't just making one-off investments in housing. Oh, wait, sorry, Labor are doing that. As Pettywog noted in the Senate, the bill the Greens are blocking also includes $2 billion in financing support for social and affordable rental homes. No. $350 million. Fake. Sorry, fake. Fake That's news. That's that $2 billion that, as Max has, like, repeatedly explained, was just restoring, it was, like, lifting the cap on finance that community housing providers could apply for, but they haven't even reached the cap already and so I think the cap had been lowered potentially by the Liberals or like Labor had or even Labor were going to lower the cap and then they were like, okay, no, we'll bring it back up by $2 billion. But because 
the cap hasn't even already been reached, it has no material impact. So that $2 billion is like they could apply for up to $7 billion or whatever it is now in finance, but right. they actually haven't even reached $4.5 billion. And so... So, it's yeah, no making this money available means, in theory, that people could support, should apply for that money to support for it. Yeah, yeah. And increasing the cap doesn't mean much if we haven't already reached where the cap was previously. No, exactly, yeah. Incredible. To build a further 10,000 affordable homes through the housing accord, allowing the National Housing and Infrastructure Facility to invest in social and affordable housing, opening up a potential $575 million in funding, a 15% <laughs> increase in Commonwealth rent assistance. Ding, 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 ding. ding. <laughs> Look, look at this. Look the at largest this. increase in over 30 years. Oh, wow. Oh, someone shoved a labor line up my ass and now I'm vomiting out in my little video. Good Jesus. Lord. What was it? What is it? $1.20 a day. Is it $1.21 a day, I think. Yeah. Extraordinary yeah. How stuff. How much are rents fucking increasing by? Thank you so much. And again, labor is reducing those rental property availables. They're not continuing the funding for those rentals that the federal government supports that we talked about before on the show. Is that right? Oh, NRAS. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're ending that right. scheme. <laughs> Sorry. Ending that scheme. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. But let's pretend this fund is the only thing the Labor Party is doing like the Greens want you to believe for a second. The Greens are pretty much pissed off that Labor has reckoned with the reality that they're not in power most of the time. And when Labor aren't in power, what? the Liberals certainly don't put money into housing. So there needs to be a long-term fix to that. I'm sorry that the long-term fix is They're literally in power right now. In, they're, everywhere across the country they're except Tasmania. They're in power right now. They're in power right now, you Liter see. What? And maybe they wouldn't lose so many elections if they if they did good stuff like yes. funding housing. An airy vanguard Bizarre. of Redditors who will establish a new constitution. Yes, and amendments won't be called amendments. They'll be called um actually the first um now, this actually of the new constitution. Um actually there should be a right for everyone to have access to sex workers because don't mean it's just shit like that. This is like why yeah, why? weird human right. Weekly peggings will now be covered by Medicare. Like listen, Fuck this it is hell. Their critique of the scheme. Actually, even Rudd did that, and I'm not a huge fan of him, but like in the last Labor government, they spent $5 billion and built a bunch of social housing. Uh, and it really is that simple. Um, obviously, theirs isn't, though. Yes. So, And the thinking behind it is by putting a $10 billion uh, housing fund, that's budget neutral, right? So we still the government still has the $10 billion, so they haven't actually spent the $10 billion. They've used the $10 billion to, in theory, generate more revenue to then kind of spend even not on houses. It's an entirely <laughs> an accounting trick. So, yeah, exactly. So basically, uh, the effect on the budget is just paying the interest of them taking out a $10 billion loan. Uh, and then what they, the budget, it won't look like they've spent $10 billion because yes, the $10 billion is an asset that the government gets to hold on to. It is literally just so they don't have to, on the one side, they can say in the budget, look, we're not spending that much on housing. And then in the public, they can say, look, we're spending lots on housing. Why are you getting upset? It's like a way to gaslight the entire election. <laughs> Um, Maybe it was a mistake to vote for a party that views dealings in government like arguments in a polyamorous relationship. Labor are fucking gaslighting us. And did you see Jackie Lambie? She's like, there she oh, is. That's me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll let this finish. What's like, he saying about me? More into labour now. So fucking fat. Okay, so for people listening to the podcast, that is uh, an Emerald tweet talking about the lines that Jackie Lambie wheeled out once she'd won her concessions on the housing thing and immediately switched yeah. around to starting doing the government's work. Or just this to weird, this thing where, should I, do I need to read this out or does he read it out? Oh, that's right. Oh, this is the moment in the corridor or whatever? Moment in the corridor where there just happened to be like, as media are standing there recording this conversation and Lambie has this exchange with Jim Chalmers, with the treasurer, where she's like, Labor, good on you for delivering housing. Oh, that's right. The treasurer goes, we appreciate your support for housing, Jackie. Thank you. After Senator <laughs> Lambie shook his hand and passed him in the hall, the Tasmanian turned back around to address Dr Chalmers in front of the media anytime. And I tell you what, the sooner we get that foundation down, the better. She told Chalmers every day that the Greens stop that something, something, people sleeping in bloody people tents. People living I can't in bloody tents. Yeah. Right. But I'm like that whole exchange, like, oh, I've, it's, it's like fucking Jemay in Summer Heights High being like, oh, my God, how did that get, one get there? Like, oh, my God, I didn't realise the I media were literally it. just there as we had that exchange. That is so embarrassing. Good Lord. <laughs> Anyway, Geordie's uh, seems to be angry at the, just at the term gaslighting. So, again, 
Oh, okay. And what what is so crazy? I mean, clearly Jordan Shanks is very annoyed that Max Chandler Mather, a man who is cut, who was just to be elected, is cutting through, can mm. talk to young people, is explaining things to people, is p- placing a very principled, yes, aggressive, but completely reasonable approach mm. in calling out Labor's bullshit. The fact that the, Max Chandler Mather is not doing this for the Labor Party, uh, it clearly annoys. Uh, um, uh, friendly Geordies. And of course, his ability to, yes, talk in the way that people actually talk, and particularly young people, is infuriating. And that's a sign of his him not being serious. And then we should only have, <laughs> I don't know, boomers like Anthony Albanese, who's been mm-hmm. in power for 30 fucking years to mm, yeah, sort of. Um, that'd be, that's best. That's the best approach, yeah. Greens like to say is, oh, you don't know if it'll build houses because what if the fund loses money because the existing future fund went down 1.2% last year? Yeah, well, uh, for one, they're using an outlier year to make that argument and I can't believe it, but I'm going to defend Peter Costello, the chairman of the existing (laughs) future fund, who pointed out that a 1.2% decline is pretty good when globally stocks and bonds were down 10%. Jesus, you only have to look at any Hustler argument? infographic Instagram page to know that the market goes up in the long term. Since its inception, the Future Fund's annualised return is 7.6%. And the year before the 1.2% decline, the Future Fund went up 22%. Incredible okay, stuff but, here. But how much would have been spent on housing? And then how, how much, much would have been spent to- in the year that it didn't make any returns? Until the Greens yeah. were able to extract a right. concession from the government that there would actually yes. be a minimum, which is exactly because what they were cap. for. There yes, was actually so there, a was a, there was a $500 million a year cap on spending. So mm-hmm. no matter how much the fund actually made, that's the most that they were going to spend before we won our concessions. Yes, and on the year in which it lost money, there would mm-hmm. be no money for housing. Like, interesting. But this is where, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, like you could, it's so cynic. Like Friendly Geordies, Friendly Geordies is really cynically appealing to an audience of like largely younger men who probably have right. seen those fucking hustler infographic <laughs> stock market memes and yes. like just want to light up a light bulb in their brain that's like stock market go up stock means money. <laughs> well, you can have I mean, a look at every year's that. return right here. It's pretty clear how much of a lie this line the Greens pedal is of. We don't even know if houses will be built because what if the fund loses money? The West's entire foreign monetary and social policy is designed to ensure that over the long term, number go up. And Labor. I- See, what happened in 2008 again? I can't remember. What I don't happened? know. Did I don't the know. numbers go up? It's interesting. I don't know what as happened? well. Like, uh, I'm interested in he, he uses the term the West instead of like capitalism is interesting. Yes. I don't really know why that is, but. Interesting. I take advantage of this to ensure a continued source of funding for housing victims of domestic violence. But yes, some years. Number go down. That's why the fund is not the only part of Labor's housing bill, but it's also why it's good because most years there's a party in power that gives nothing to build social housing. Again, okay, now this is bizarre too. Just at this point, at 12.09, the people listening to the podcast, there's just a screenshot of a Guardian article saying Labor guarantees minimum $500 million each year for housing in bid to win green support. <laughs> Now, he will mention this article in a bit, but there's just no comment. I don't know if this is a mistake or something, but it's just kind of. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's a disclaimer down the bottom, I see. Okay, so they might have added this. Oh, he added this in. uh, Added this afterwards. Labor has now guaranteed that the fund will provide a minimum of $500 mils a year, a provision for the treasurer to increase the amount. The Greens are still opposed. Okay, Okay. interesting. Wow. Mm. What What was the case before? Doesn't matter. Yeah, so it wasn't like that. So there was a maximum $500 million, but the Greens are being so ridiculous that they their strategy is working and they're mm. sticking to their guns because we still don't have anything on renters and yet it's just sort of weird. Mm. All right, three minutes now, all left. this being said, do I think Labor should do more to address the housing crisis? Yes. Yes. <gasps> the unions, Jackie Lambie and other crossbenchers also think that, but mm. they're not blocking what's proposed and misrepresenting Labor's proposals to further their careers. I think even Labor... <laughs> to further their careers. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. No, they've they've folded on concessions they thought they won, which weren't really concessions, and are mm. joining these weird attacks on the Greens because the Greens are yeah. actually winning. And, and when winning you do that, it's in good faith. But when you hold the line and continue to fight for more, that's for your career. That's really bad. Yeah, that's okay. not good. Help their careers. What are, what are, what are you talking about? I don't know. Getting get, getting anything done when you're not in government is is obviously yeah doing any kind of fight as a party outside of the Labor Party is is obviously a cynical 
uh, attempt to yeah boost your own media profile, serve your ego, not actually to win any outcomes, of course. Lol. Labor thinks it should do more. You know who doesn't, though? The majority of Australians, apparently. Labor lost two elections proposing reform to negative gearing and capital. Um, okay. This is wild. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't warn me that we get to this. Oh yeah, they're all coming through. They're all oh, coming through, baby. Oh my god. We're really he's really saying that the majority of Australians don't want Labor to do more on housing. That's just categorically yes. untrue. In fact, don't we have like direct recent polling that shows that Australians want the government to do more on housing? Like I'm pretty sure that exists. Yes. There anyway. are what, like two million landlords or something like that? Um, compared to everybody else yeah. who is not a landlord, um, they obviously want movement on this. In 2016, the Labor did, Party did very, very well, actually increased, pushed the uh, coalition government into minority. So they lost that election, but in, within one term, that was from 2013 to 2016, the fact that they almost won in 2016 is pretty fucking insane, okay, mm. actually did quite well. 2019, the Australian election study shows us that there was overwhelming majority support for reforming negative gearing and capital gains taxes, right, and the concessions on the capital gains tax. Every economist agrees we need to change negative gearing. The idea, and as I think he's just about to say, capital gains tax concessions. I made a video earlier this year on why those two reforms would have greatly improved housing affordability. Right. But Australians, with a little help from the press, rejected Labor in those two elections with those policies being a major factor in that no, rejection. No, it wasn't. You just decided. And you just said that. Actually, you know who decided that? The media that you the media. apparently hate, and yet you're just and reproducing that shitty analysis. Right. And Craig Everson in his, like, the, the Labor Review after the 2019 loss. Yeah. yeah. But don't worry, they won in 2022, and so we can't do anything good, even though the, the, the good thing would absolutely make the problem better. Mm. We can never do it. We can't do I anything really ever again that happen. in the future. But everyone else is stupid yeah. and evil. So Labor and the vast majority of people don't want to see good things happen. Yeah. Who? And one. Now, do I like the fact that we live in a country where the press, property peak bodies, developers, and the coalition control public policy to that great extent? No, I've had my house burnt down because I can't shut up about this shit. But I recognise that reality. And to actually achieve outcomes in Australia, you have to work within reality. Oh, right. So you just a need reasonable... to roll over and do whatever those powerful interests want. Oh, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, rational. That's how you make finally. society better. Nothing can change, by the way. All these yeah. settings are as they are and vote for us to get us into government so that we won't actually change anything. Mm. You can make we can't YouTube change anything because we need to win it. and get into government. You see what you I mean? You can make YouTube videos about it, which certainly, yeah. yeah, that's very different. When you make monetized YouTube videos, the income stream from which you rely upon about something, that's yeah. not for your personal benefit as opposed to like pouring every ounce of yourself and your work into fighting for better on other any other platforms that might be likely to actually force some change, then it's, uh, yeah, then it's like for personal career uh, advancement. Who really thinks this is a good tactic? Demanding of Labor, break your promises, otherwise we will block the measures you actually have a mandate for that will address the housing crisis. Mandate. Measures, mind you, that aren't a cap. They've said it a million times. A million times. Just- <laughs> a million times. In the just- past day when they announced this. <laughs> it's completely undermined by the fact that the Greens won that same concession. You yes. crazy motherfucker. You little bastard. This video was also what? released before the two million dollars in extra direct funding that the grades mm. the grades also managed to win too. Which is suddenly yeah. you can just you can do that. You can just find two billion dollars to actually directly fund housing. It's sort of weird to have it. Sometimes so you can, sometimes you can't, Tom. You wouldn't understand. Just the beginning. I'm on cocaine. So in essence, <laughs> it's the Greens voting against Labor's bill because why? They're annoyed that they don't get to administer the solution? What? No. This is what I don't get about the Greens platform. Half of it is how very powerful interests control the country. The other half is going, oh, why hasn't Labor nationalised Adani and replaced the CEO with a drag queen who can also double as our defence minister and tell the Americans to fuck off and then we can cut defence spending and do what really matters, invest in mental health comedy nights. It would be so easy to do. After all, everything's possible in a parliamentary democracy. All you have to do is vote Greens. I guess that's the sell. For Greens to I succeed, mean, Labor has to appear to fail. But are you really sure. naive enough to think that even if the most improbable thing happened, the Greens won office, it would last longer than a term? 
with all the vested interests against it, and the party of Redditors would resist the forces that permeate and influence all Western governments and govern more effectively than Labor. The fact that their best tactic on this housing bill is not negotiating, to quote the Twitch streamers, their voters watch way too much in good faith, and actually achieving <laughs> positive outcomes like the other crossbenchers have done, but holding it hostage and lying about Labor being as bad as the Liberals, that really should tell you everything. We haven't done that line at Can all. Can we pause? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, I don't know about that. But like, I mean, interesting critique of the limits of, you know, of social democracy, um, yes. of the electoral system, Geordies. <laughs> yes. Those are really interesting topics and maybe you could come on the show sometime and we could kind of um, pour through them because I think there's a lot to, to talk about there. Yes. And lying about Labor being as bad as the Liberals, that really should tell you everything you need to know. Okay. They can't okay. even manage First of it. all, I'm intrigued that so he now I think two or three times has called the Greens the party of Redditors. And I at first I thought I misunderstood or misheard because I was like, right. is this a thing? And But, yeah, no, he's calling us a party of Redditors when, like, I don't think anyone I know in the Greens uses Reddit. But maybe he is he bitter Reddit because channel. he's got his own Reddit where people are increasingly turning against him? Yes, right, yes. The Friendly Geordies uh, Reddit quite sympathetic towards the green strategy on housing, I must say. Yeah, Call yeah. us tweet, like blue checks or Twitter people or something. Yeah, Surely yeah, we're terminally online on Twitter. That'd be yeah, way more yeah. sense. Also, I mean, make fun of me for my failed TV projects. Talk yeah. about how I've put on a bit more weight. Why are you talking funny. about Triple J, man? Move on. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, but I mean, the irony of in the same video where, yeah, he's like popped up on the screen a couple, like at least twice the concession that the Greens won from negotiating in good yes. faith with Labor and then saying yes. that the Greens won't do that to sensibly negotiate concessions on the bill. <laughs> and also, though, like the idea that it's the Greens who are not willing to negotiate in good faith on this bill is so hilarious. I mean, you literally only have to look at those, like the photos of Albanese and the way that he looks at Max in Parliament <laughs> and anyone that you speak to, like who is anywhere near Labor or those negotiations, will say that Albanese's personal vitriol for the Greens and for Max is getting in the way of his ability to actually negotiate on this bill. Like they literally just won't talk to them. So that is fucking funny. Extraordinary. It's their own cons. Guys, lay off using the word cooked. Okay, this is fair enough. I actually think this is fair enough. Really? We probably no, use the word cooked? cooked too much. Final cook thing, and there's a lot of cooked things here. It's really weird. <laughs> Are you, you Triple like J hosts from 2013? Oh, wait, you are. Anyway, there you <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's-, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> he's, he's bloody got me a good one there. That's yeah, fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do say cook too much, probably. That's, that's probably fair. I'll take that. Mm. But Jesus Christ, what is a- Is that bo- it? What a- are we done? That is. That is the end, yeah. thank God. Yeah. That took a bit but- long. <laughs> It took so long. I'm sorry, <laughs> Michael, who's editing this. But um, Jesus Christ, yeah, what a what a perfect encapsulation of better things aren't possible, right? Pushing yeah. for <laughs> the most mild social democratic reforms, the kind of reforms you would have found in the Labor policy agenda in the 1970s um, that would have been just a, a very basic ask of government intervention, direct investment in housing, trying to fight back against the forces of capital that have fucked us so very, very much. No, 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 we can't do any of that. That's ridiculous. That's fantasy mm-hmm. land. What you need to do is just be subservient to those forces and do some little tweaking every now and again. But if anything yeah, challenges the forces of capital, challenges the people that donate to our political party. Doesn't mention that too much, by the way, the corporations that donate to the Labor Party and how mm. the Labor might be captured by those vested interests. Doesn't want to get into that. Don't worry about that. No, no, no. No, we can't have any of that. Um, and anybody asking for anything better is fucking up with our beautiful Labor plan and you're being ridiculous. Better things aren't possible. Jesus fucking Christ. What a what a bleak outlook about uh, that, that just is a beautiful argument against anything truly radically progressive yeah. uh, in this country. Don't hope. Don't hope you or you're a fucking idiot. Like, right. and also, yes, you're vaguely somehow less masculine or you're like these weird, vaguely homophobic allusions to like us liking drag queens or something. I don't know. Right. Yes, yes. The woke is the woke angle. It's like, oh, well, Labor idiot. hasn't nationalised Adani and installed a drag queen as a CEO, drag therefore. Queen, yeah. That's that's it. and also the assumption that Labor wants to do good thing, like wants to do all this progressive stuff, but it's just withheld by the forces of capital and the status quo. Now that's a huge assumption. There are heaps of people in the Labor Party 
who have no interest whatsoever, who are very comfortable in the right wing of that party and, are, you know, have a centre-right outlook, who are very mm-hmm. happy to expand markets as much as possible, who aren't interested in anything coming back into public ownership, who think, you know, as our, as our good friend um, Rob Lichter puts it on Twitter on a regular basis, many people at the Labor Party quite happy with how Australia is, doesn't think too much should change, really. Things are yeah, working and out in pretty fact- well. On a, a larger scale, like a larger proportion of the Labor Party, I would say, than broader Australian society. Yes. And so, yes. yet, yeah, yeah, you're somehow trying to make the argument that like people in Labor are all good and want to do these good things, but broader public, the broader public in this country actually don't. Well, actually, it's the other way around because those corporate yes. interests, those interests in the property market are more concentrated within your like center right political party, your political yes. establishment than they are in the vast majority of Australian people. So that's the vid, y'all. We got through it. What, how are you feeling, Emeralds? Do you feel roasted? Do you feel owned? Uh, are you going to quit comedy and, it wasn't as, and politics? It wasn't as fun as I had hoped. It was kind of boring. Pretty bleak. The video. <laughs> Add some interesting feedback from our patrons, first of all, of Serious Danger, beautiful people like you listen to this. Emma says, rude of Friendly Geordies to not mention the real star of the podcast, Emerald Moon. Exactly. Uh, Lots of people saying that the funny one was neglected. <laughs> um, baffling, you didn't mention anything about renters. For Friendly Geordies kept saying that the Greens were blocking this bill. Out of all the comms I've heard, they're going to pass it as long as there's improvements and additional support for renters. I mean, that was extraordinarily he what is missing yeah, from the conversation. He didn't say Just anything no, about renters. That is interesting. All. I didn't even think about that. Friendly Geordies, this is from Troy, spends ages on his little joke that Tom made so he can spend less time interrogating Labor Party's dumb cunt policy on housing. <laughs> Phenomenal. I think that's probably a pretty good point. Mm-hmm. Uh, your videos could be as long as you want, man. You could keep going longer to dip into the detail, but no, no. We've got to spend a decent chunk on Matty Healy and a joke that a comedian made. <laughs> Daniel, watching his housing crisis video from a couple of months ago, he agrees that something should be done about negative gearing and CGT, but because Bill Shorten lost in 2019, it will never happen again. Quite a depressing video. Which yeah, exactly, which he does in this video. Hey, like yeah. the fact Loves that he's it. just like, Nothing we can't. good can ever happen. Yeah. Jen says, free publicity. From what I've seen of Friendly Geordie's viewers, a decent amount of them are more left-wing and more open to the Greens than Friendly Geordie's himself, so hopefully some of them enjoy the pod and stick around. And I will say there was a little uptick in people supporting the Patreon, following us on social media, and uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel, pushing us over. I would over. love to hear it. Yeah, like if you, I mean, I don't know if they would have gone straight in the leap to, to Patreon, <laughs> who knows, but if you've jumped over and become an immediate patro- patron from Friendly Geordie's, let us know. It's And it's definitely like... Pretty extraordinary uh, exposure to, again, a pretty much, I think there's about 220,000 views of the video now. And as we were saying, the people, the kind of people that might be attracted to a friendly joy videos are definitely people that we think that we can speak to and the Greens can yeah. resonate with. And that's totally reflected through the comments. In, I, I literally scrolled through this this morning. I, there was not a negative comment about us or about the Greens. There was really? either commenting on Matty Healy stuff. <laughs> or basically just saying that labor sucks, the housing policy sucks, the housing crisis is terrible, and a lot of people saying that the um, you know, the Greens approach and the strategy on this front and fighting for more is completely justified. It's I wonder it was what really Friendly Geordie's striking. thinks seeing that. <laughs> TJ commented, as a Labor branch member, the discussions on Labor's housing agenda is that it's really weak and many of us inside the party are trying to push for more. Pretty much all members understand that the housing agenda will go nowhere to ease the increasing issue of homelessness and housing affordability. In fact, there's a group called Housing Labor that are putting the pressure through and we've seen that group sort of um, in Victoria mainly, I think, bust through into the into the, the public sphere and apply pressure and sort of are trying to pressure on Labor to do more. I checked Max's main reason for blocking this bill. Primarily it's because this won't help build a single house till 2025 and they haven't specifically allocated the money to public and affordable housing. The payments aren't indexed to inflation and while this is a good start on a long-term solution, people need help now, which is why they suggested a temporary $1 billion a year rent freeze and uh, seems like a good idea considering the billions and stage three tax cuts and hundreds of billionaires of billions we've committed to wasting on submarines. Pretty hey. good. TJ, have you considered the Greens? I'm not over. <laughs> These are other comments. You can actually find out what neoliberalism is and what deconstructing it might look like. One recent example would be the Whitlam years where government-funded social housing construction directly, unlike this scheme, resulted in higher wages and lower employment. Neoliberalism isn't just a Greens woke thing. I appreciate your silly style, but it's better when it's coupled with facts, like you did do to the libs. I agree. This smells Such a bit a of sky. This this smells a bit of sky news, but for labour, which yes. does have a place. 
<laughs> but you That's can do like- better than just greens bashing because they represent a moral threat to some Labour seats. Skyviews, <laughs> but for Labour. This is a very, like... Like reasoned and calm, but also cutting critique of the video. Yeah, because I think it's people saying that, hey, broadly friendly Geordies, I'm on board. I've come to your channel. I subscribe, mm. like your videos. But this video, this attack you're going with is so off. And perhaps we're seeing what friendly Geordies under a Labor government, a Labor federal and state government looks like in that mm. without being able to critique the, <laughs> the Labor Party, but, yeah, then the you've just Liberal got Party. so little to yeah. say about the, the shitty status quo and what we should do about it. Yeah, yeah. One comment from Max's electorate. Last election, we only had the big five on the ballot, United Australia Party, One Nation, ALP, LNP, Greens, and Terry from ALP had already pissed off a lot of the locals. That's the main reason Max got it. Anyways, he's been really engaged with the community and active, runs open community forums to discuss local issues and whatnot, and he has a lot of empathy for renters struggling. That being said, he's very black and white. You either meet him on his terms or not at all. I think you're going to see a lot more pushback from him on this and other matters, to be honest. That's a very interesting assessment. I would yeah. I would not say... I mean, Terry Butler pissing off a lot of locals, sure, but I don't think that that's the main reason that Max won. I think it was a massive grassroots campaign and a platform that people get on board with. But also, yeah, like meeting Max on his terms or not at all, I wonder what that means. Yeah, just again, it's just someone who isn't blinking when all the political pressure in the world is being applied to them. He's actually the green standing by what they believe in. From the Friendly Jordan's Reddit was really interesting too. There was a thread started around this video and I thought this one was particularly interesting. Aussie Lefty, this video is actually an embarrassment on Geordie's behalf. Half the vid is talking about the 1975 lead singer because he knows there's little substance to what he's saying. The rest of the vid, he's making up memes and using sarcasm to distract and try and discredit the Greens. This video seems so out of touch for him. Does he not know how bad things are right now? People are literally living in their cars and in tents in 2023. Rather than listen to honest concerns, he just used mocking people like Adam Band and Max as some sort of caricatures of leftist, leftist activists. It's so childish and stupid. This is probably the worst and least fact substantiated video I've seen of Geordie's. Sarcasm and irony won't help people suffering from the massive housing issues, mate. Stop being a cheerleader and actually do what you do best and present the facts. And I think this, again, is really the dishonesty of friendly Geordies as a commentator on this. As we mentioned, citing the fact that Labor has said that this $500 million is not a cap without acknowledging that that would not be the case without Green's pressure is just a really clear example of him not giving you the full facts whatsoever and arguing from a partisan point of view. Mm. And, and I think the also thing that it leaves me thinking is just like in friendly Geordies world, if you don't like Labor policy, what do you do? Like what is yeah. the actual political strategy to ask for anything more than what the Labor Party has arrived at through its policy processes? Because listen to Fredley Geordie's, every policy position and platform of the Labor Party has been thoroughly thought through, is genius and cannot be improved. And if you want to go any further than this, you're a ridiculous leftist who wants to live in a fantasy world with pixie dusk and, and unicorns. It's really cynical and depressing and he has no political insight as to how to do anything about that. Mm, But what you do is cope. And I think like what these videos are designed to do, I would imagine, yeah, the objective of this is you're meant to watch it and feel better about supporting Labor's proposal because you might have started to feel a bit icky and a bit bad because you're like, why doesn't Labor want to do better? And this doesn't seem quite right. And he wants to provide like a salve for those concerns, something that's like, no, no, don't worry. It's fine. Actually, like, what you're doing is right, what you're supporting yep. is right, and it makes sense um, to just kind of like quell that cognitive dissonance, you know, but like but it's just a bridge too far in this instance, it seems. And, I mean, I don't know, like I also, yeah, I, I do wonder, I, I don't know what Friendly Geordie's kind of popularity growth has been over the years and whether it's kind of reached a peak and... It's past. It seems like his style and his politics are surely going to slip out of fashion or beginning to slip out of fashion. Mm. And him being the dominant or even like the only voice that can reach a mass audience of young people who are kind of like interested in broadly progressive politics um, yeah. but want to be engaged, you know, in an, in an interesting way, like him being the only voice that is reaching them, that's no longer the case. And like mm. increasingly, genuinely leftist progressive voices and the Greens are kind of like stepping into that that breach. Yeah. And look, mm-hmm. as he, if he continues to produce videos like this and fails to have serious answers to the problems facing young people and people who are progressive who want to see a better Australia, I think 
at least that credibility. Maybe people will just tune into the, mm. you know, maths videos or the pop culture videos or the dumb or listen for the dumb, stupid uh, voices, but seriously won't take that kind of um, his political analysis clearly, or at least will take it with a very large grain of labour salt, I suppose. Mm. Do you think he would just go full far right? Like if he wasn't I able mean, to. I mean, the Mark Latham thing, like the reactionary yeah. stuff just sort of drips in, doesn't it? Particularly on mm. social issues, as we've said, when it comes to drugs. Uh, any yeah. you know, his, his rejection and hatred of anything woke or whatever, um, uh, you know, could probably lead to some pretty shitty uh, areas. And this kind of yes, the the stuff about the manosphere bro attitude towards women, yeah, also seems like a little bit. And of a when it's player. when it's your livelihood, like when your fundamental, your primary motive here is like he needs to monetize his content. He needs to be like interesting enough to you know and spicy enough to a broad audience mm. if it's no longer working for the kind of young notional progressive or left then i wouldn't be surprised if he looks for a new new niche right the grift. my lo- last disclaimer which i feel i have to say which is uh you know when he was being sued for defamation and also the fact that he had his house, house attacked like that is fucking yeah, that's insane. Bad. That is horrific and <laughs> bad. And I yeah. will say I've often talked about how safe Australian media can be, how there's very few comedians, comic voices who want to make trouble, who are prepared to sort of, you know, be a little bit cheeky and naughty and stuff. And I am quite, I do, when I think about who is, who does that kind of stuff, you know, there is a very small pool and Fredly Jordis is probably the most influential of that group, you know, as someone yeah, who's and has done one or two naughty things myself. Yeah, and, and, and faced like, insane and responses. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, in no way am I trying to like yeah, tone police or sort of say, hey, so then I just wish he was fighting for something better. Oh, quite and- the opposite. I don't care how, you know, that's the thing. Like I don't care what you say or how shitty right. you say, like, but your politics are bad. Yeah. And you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah, just be correct and have better politics and uh, we'll get on board the Friendly Jordan thing. Like us. We'll send our 1,000 subscribers your way, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for being a patron. All that money goes towards cocaine, so it really means a lot. Thank you so much <laughs> for supporting the show. Uh, rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Give us a five-star review. Get those subs up. On YouTube, please. We really please. appreciate it. Please. <laughs> please make us look less pathetic <laughs> when a, a famous YouTuber wants to attack us. Bye, everyone. Serious danger.